Fam review. Hey guys, World Leader here. Today we're going to be going over another familiar today that we all know and love, and that familiar is going to be Borlin. Now, Borlin is a very, very basic familiar that you can full craft in tier 1. So don't expect any fancy things on this guy. This guy comes with only 15% extra damage. They have very high damage, they have very, very low health, and an extreme amount of speed. So this usually means that they're going to be in the DPS category. However, believe it or not, this familiar can be either a bait or a DPS. So it really depends on what you want. I highly recommend not going the bait route, but it is possible. I would say going all the way through with Empower Chance for the pumps would be your best option, but of course it's going to be the beginning of the game, so just work with what you've got. Dual Strike, Damage, and of course Empower are the three I highly recommend on Borlin. Anything else, it's it's really niche. You can try something with the bait category like I said, maybe all block, all damage reduction, all evade, something, but it's not as useful as putting all damage on Borlin. Now for the chip, I think you should go heal power if you have it, but again, you might not even have any chips, so don't be afraid to leave that empty. Um, again, this isn't the beginning of the game, but for the best case scenario, or for you Borland lovers out there, I've found that heal power is my favorite thing on Borland. So heal power all the way on the chip. For the brain, a per turn brain is always better than any other brain, unless you have a lot of dual strikes stacked up. I highly recommend against when you get hit on Borland since they have so much speed even if you do try to go a bait route with Borland I would highly recommend a per turn as the best option and a when you hit an enemy as your second best option again this is going to be at the beginning of the game you can use any brain you want any brain you want offensive defensive it really does not matter both types shine on Borland I personally like an offensive brain. I wish I had a per turn for this. I, I don't know what happened to my brain. I did have a per turn attack enemy team, but I can't find it. But anyways, um, that's what I recommend on Borland would be something like an attack team per turn if you have it. Doesn't matter the rarity, but the higher the better because it does bump up your percentage chance. Now for the skeletal lining, if you guys have any at this point in the game, which you more than likely will not, um, I would put while at full health SP regeneration increased by 16% or really anything else that you have to work with other than redirect chance. The only bone that you would not want to put on them is redirect chance. Everything else is, is okay, it's fine because again this is going to be a fan that you can actually make in tier 1. Literally the first 10 minutes of the game you can probably make at least one of these guys if you're lucky. So it, you're not going to have too much. Let's go ahead and go on to the skills. The skills is only three skills. It's very basic. You have deals damage to closest enemy, spread heal teammates for one SP, and deals damage to furthest enemy for two SP. Now, how do I recommend you use Borland? I recommend you just use your zero SP to save SP until you need your heals. Once you need your heals, heal your team, or if you're already perfectly healed, Cross the board, mind you, save your SP until you can use this ability, Slime Snipe, and use that to take out any bosses or any familiars that are really giving you problems, so long as none of your team needs heals, mind you. You only want to use this if you're fully healed or if you know that you need more DPS output than anything else, because this is a very strong ability. You can even see here that it does tremendously more damage than the zero SP attack. Let's go ahead and go on to the schematic itself. You need 5k gold each, which at the beginning of the game is actually kind of a lot. So save all your gold you can. Only bribe what familiars that you do need, which are going to be these two right here that I'll go over in a sec. And then your rare materials. Now for rare materials, it's going to be kind of hard to get the amount you need to make at least the three stack Borland. You are going to want to do this over here, and I don't always recommend this, but for this case, I kind of do. If you go to the smithy, you go to the last tab on craft, you can see here that you can make some rare materials. Now this does take some gold, and it does take your common material, but at the beginning of the game, rare material is so important. You use it to level up all your gear, at least until tier 4, I believe, you're going to be using rares a lot. So. 
you're going to want to pretty much do this for a little while. It does take some gold. It does take your common material, but common material is extremely useless in the game. Um, you don't even have to worry about it. I, I've never once leveled a common item in my life, so don't worry about wasting these common materials. Just keep an eye on the gold. So I recommend doing that to make Borlin. I highly recommend it. I would never recommend against it for Borlin, but only in Borlin's case. So now that that part's over with, let's go on to the familiars. It takes two rare familiars to make Borlin. The first one being Bob. I'll go ahead and click on Bob. We'll go to the little map on the top left, and you can see here that it is Dryad's Heart. Now, one thing I really love about Borlin is all the familiars you need, or both familiars you need, are in Bit Valley, which is the first zone. For Bob, it's going to be here at the second area, the little tree, Dryad's Heart. It's going to be Tier 1, and you're always going to want to do Heroic. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the only place that you can get the Borlin schematic. I don't think you can get it at the other location for some reason. So, on the second location, you can get Borlin schematic, which is going to be Dryad's Heart, where you farm Bob. Let's go ahead and go back to the schematic and check out the last part of it, which is going to be Merlin. If you click on Merlin, you click the top left, you'll see Lord Cerulean's Tomb. Now, let's go ahead and go to the map. And it's going to be the one right after the tree, which is this little torn down castle piece. Click on it, Lord Cerulean's Tomb. You can always want to do heroic to take advantage of that capture rate, of course. Go and go down to this treasure chest to see if the schematic drops here. And it does, nice. I, for some reason, didn't think that Borland schematic dropped here, but hey, it does. That's amazing. So you have a second place to farm your Borland schematic. And yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for Borlin. So where do I recommend you use Borlin? I recommend you use Borlin in pretty much just quest and PvP, invasion, trials gauntlet, and only if you have to, if you have no other options. You are going to be using him at the beginning of the game, so he is going to really be your only option. But later in the game, when you have other options, I highly recommend dropping Borlin. I know it's sad, but they are just a starting familiar and that's where they have to be. Unless you are some kind of Borlin enthusiast and you just really love Borlin, especially Shrams, people love the duo, then take them as far as you want. But in my opinion, you need to upgrade them shortly after crafting them. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is World Eater. Have a great one, guys.